Chef, welcome to Melbourne. This is the land of the Wurundjeri people, the First Nations tribe, and one of the most beautiful cities in the world. It is, and this market is so well organised. I think outside of Australia, you have a perception of what Australia is about and what Australians are like. But then when you come to somewhere like a city like Melbourne, you see this huge diversity, multiculturalism, and our wonderful conformity. And Melbourne is a market city. That's the joy of it. And you can celebrate it at a relatively reasonable price in a global food economy. Melbourne's just eclectic for produce. This is an absolute prime example of what we've got. Fruits, vegetables, meat, fish, deli, bakery, it's alive. Uh, they look fantastic, right? I haven't seen them that big before. I mean, that's beautiful. Okay. I mean, this is kind of like uh, it's bigger than a megaphone. It, it, it is, <laughs> right? And what you get here, what you get here, not just in this market, but in Australia, is so many different climates going on. You can often see in some markets winter's produce in our traditional mindsets alongside summer produce. You have so different, many climate zones here, so yeah. different going times can bring it so you can bring it all to market. And even within state, right? So, you know, you're here in Melbourne, you go, well, hopefully when you get to the countryside, temperatures are gonna drop in the winter 10 degrees more, oh. and in the real heat of the summer, they're 10, 15 degrees warmer as well. So it's, it's just this roller coaster of climates. You got what, uh, 10 varieties of uh, potatoes and soft laying over there. Yeah from sweet potato to yams, you name it. This just about sums up, you know, the multicultural diversity. You've got okra next to Jerusalem artichokes. Yeah. You know, this classic European yeah. produce right next to uh, African produce. The variety is just amazing to a chef. I mean, the joke in Melbourne is, uh -huh. if you're going out and about, you know, coats, jumpers, everything, you're going to experience four seasons in one day weather-wise. Come to a market, I think you've got four seasons <laughs> produce-wise. Right us, yeah. Indoors, you've got quite a lot of the Greek traders here, as well as Italians. They say that there are more Greek people living in Melbourne than they are in many of the Greek cities, and that this is the second capital outside of Athens for Greek people, for Melbourne. Okay, mate. Uh, I don't want one you can... <laughs> You can't come to Melbourne without a coffee. What would you like? A regular. See now, you see, we're in Australia. <laughs> you can't have a regular coffee. It doesn't exist, right? You, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of different types of varieties. We do the long black. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I never knew this until I moved here. You know, the first Italian coffee machines were actually made here. It's about skill and knowledge. A lot of it's about just passion and purpose, just like anything in the chef world, right? Every single coffee maker is like researching their blends and their beans and their varieties. And I haven't had a bad coffee yet, right? Same here, except ordering it. <laughs> <laughs> coffee is almost like wine and terroir. It's becoming very important. You know, the flavor stays within yeah. it. It's an art form, not just about dollars and cents. It's the passion yeah. you have to have behind it. Okay. The regular long black for you, yep. sir. Let's a small cappuccino. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. oh, you're welcome. Thank you. There you What's go, that? look at that. The aroma, the bouquet that comes right out of that coffee. I mean, the temperature, getting the beans in the right place, the right grind, oh. the right tamper, everything about it. Now I'm awake. You're awake. Two, two, two sips of that and right. voila, it's unbelievable. <laughs>